What is up YouTube? Back for another episode. Hope you're all having an amazing day and let's take a quick time out. We just hit 5k bros. Yes, that's what I'm talking about man. Oh, so excited man. Let's keep this channel growing man. I want to thank each and every one of you for making this possible man. It's been an amazing experience. Thank you guys. So if you guys haven't already, take a time out right now. Head on up to the corner of the page, right up in here, and BAM! Smash that subscribe button. Let's keep this channel growing, bros. So with all that out of the way, I'm ready to uh, take my carbon fiber skills to the next level, man. Okay, so I've learned how to repair carbon fiber. I've learned how to strengthen carbon fiber. Now I want to learn how to skin things with carbon fiber. After this step, it'll be actually making carbon fiber molds. So, as you can see, this is what I'm going to be skinning. Because I was like, man, I need to find something, you know, small, out of the way. I don't want to do, like, bumpers or any of that kind of stuff. Because it's actually, you know, I would rather learn how to, like, make a mold and actually make a real carbon fiber bumper as opposed to skinning it. Because then I'm just adding a bunch of weight. So, that being said, I just want to do something small just to learn how to skin things. And I thought this would be the perfect idea. So... I want to skin this right here. Now I know you guys are thinking, wait a minute, I thought that was always black. And this is just the fuse box cover that sets right down by your uh, your left leg, driver's side. Uh, it was originally plastic it black, peeled all the plastic off. This stuff's crazy, isn't it? I always thought that stuff was amazing. Anyways, that being said, uh, so here's how I'm going to approach this. So, I'm hardly ever in here. I mean, maybe once a year. I think I've only replaced one fuse since I had the car in seven years, so I don't really care about this this thing being able to open this right here. Because I can just pop the whole thing off in literally like 30 seconds. So I want to make this an actual, like, a part of the whole thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my Dremel and this is my idea. I'm going to cut this little tab off right here. And then I'm going to take my Dremel and put like a little, uh, uh, another type of wheel on it and just like a grinding wheel and grind this piece right here flat and then grind this little piece flat. And then I'm just going to take like a little piece of uh, plastic basically and just kind of mold the piece of plastic across through there so that when I put this in here, it will actually fill up you know what I'm saying? This piece will be gone, but that piece of mold will actually fill that hole up. Now, I might make it to where it goes all the way up and touches right here, but if it just goes right here, that's fine with me. Because this sets, as you can see, a little bit lower all the way around. So I'm going to end up using Bondo and mudding this whole section so I can get it all nice and perfectly flat. Because when you put the... Uh, carbon fiber on there it'll actually you'll be able to see like if it divots in and stuff like that you'll be able to see it I just want it to be as smooth as possible probably gonna be tricky getting the carbon fiber around this piece because I'm about to kind of snip it and you'll probably see kind of the flaw in it I don't know that's this is gonna be a whole learning curve and actually working with the carbon fiber and trying to get the piece as perfectly flat as possible getting the timing down of when exactly to do it like this is gonna be this is all new to me here so to just get started here, first things first, take my Dremel, put the cutting wheel off, cutting wheel on, cut this off, and take the grinding wheel, put it on, and then grind this little thing flat right here, and grind that little piece flat right there. There it is. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to use, uh, I'm going to use 100 grit sandpaper so I can, I want this stuff to have a really good bite because I'm going to go ahead and just use my little carbon fiber kit that I bought um, from eBay because it's got like this little roll, if you guys remember. Just a tiny little roll like that. So it'll be perfect. Just go right over top of the plastic and mold it right on there. Uh, or if you guys are curious about the little plastic I'm going to use anytime I need plastic or if I need to test drill or any kind of stuff like that 
I just use this bin right here. As you can see, all my test drilling holes before I actually drill into carbon fiber or anything like that. And if I actually need a piece of plastic, as you can see, I just rob it from <laughs> from this little bin. These, these little totes are cheap, man. Super cheap. So I just need to go ahead and cut out the perfect little piece, size it up, and hit it, uh, hit it with the 100 grit, and then hit the other piece with the 100 grit sandpaper. Okay, it's a little piece of plastic. Basically, the only thing I'm doing is just I, I I'm gonna mud this over, and I need the mud to be able to stop and not just and you know see what I'm saying this is gonna go down there and just cause a huge mess, and I'll never get it to stay. So this in here, piece of plastic. Once I mold it in, sit right like that. Like that perfect. And then I can just fill the rest of that hole right there with mud. Nice. So I'm sitting here thinking about it, and I went ahead and got that sanded both sides. Got that sanded. And I knew once I got it molded together that it'd be tough to get down inside there. So I went ahead and got that sanded. And I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and use 100 grit on all of this and this. Because I know once I get the carbon fiber molded on there, I'm not going to be want to put you know a bunch of pressure on there trying to sand over top of it you know just taking a chance of cracking it off there because I'm just gonna go over it with uh with just uh with just one layer of the uh, epoxy so all right fellas got the little piece cut so now I just need to go ahead and prep the resin just in case you guys are wondering I actually get the carbon fiber from a place called composite envisions uh, you can order directly to them, or they actually have an eBay site and get some stuff off there. Uh, but I order my resin through a place called CNJ Composites Technology, and it's another place that you can. Uh, that's a actual eBay site. Now, how this stuff works? It is a two parts resin, one part hardener. Super simple. Uh, so basically, let's say we do. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's say we do 10 cc's of resin. That means half of that, which will be five, would be a hardener. Super easy. It's that simple. Now, once I actually mix it up, you're going to mix this stuff up really good for like three minutes straight. You want to make sure it's super mixed and you don't want to overdo it with a hardener. As you overdo it with a hardener, man, you'll have a ton of issues. Trust me, I've already been through it. And obviously, you don't want to underdo it either. So you want to be as absolutely perfect as possible. Eventually, I'll get to the point where I'll have some scales, and I'll be able to weigh it out, and then there will be it, it'll be absolutely perfect. Okay, so it's done. And then I went ahead and put it back in here, and then just put a little super glue right on each one of these little tabs just so it holds in place while I can get the bondo on there and once the bondo is on there it'll that'll hold it on there permanently so break out some bondo put some hardener on there and get to work man okay there we go fellas now I was gonna do the entire thing to fill all this in and I had some of it done and I did some research and apparently gel coat doesn't really work too well with Bondo. It doesn't really want to bond together with it. So that's why I'm just filling that hole with that. Now I'm going to mix up some resin and I'll just fill in all these gaps and everything with uh, a coat of resin. I'll just do it all over that. Got the resin mixed up. Okay, so the first batch was just basically to fill in that hole all the way around through there, which it actually did really good. So now this batch I'm going to use the squeegee and try to actually make it smooth all around these corners where it dips in really hard. Alright fellas, so this is what it's going to look like. Now I wasn't looking for it to actually fill all the way up perfectly the edge. Basically just fill in the crack in so that this thing doesn't pop out at all. Um, and trying to fill in the corners a little bit. Okay, it's been 24 hours. I actually broke out some 100 grit sandpaper and went over all the resin. So this thing's actually ready to be covered with carbon fiber. But here's the issue. So for carbon fiber to actually like really 
be shown off and shining through, you want the background to be black. Like, uh, like any carbon fiber products you buy, you'll notice on the back they have that FRP plastic. And it's like solid black. So there's like no distractions from what you actually see, you know what I'm saying? So if I were to just put the carbon fiber over this, through those little tiny weaves, you would actually be able to see this gray shine through. So we don't want that. So there's two options I have here. I could actually get some, uh, some what's called base coat resin, and it's actually already black. Or I could buy some pigment and mix it in with the resin that I have, which that's the route I'm going to go. Because it's only like, I think it's like 15, 17 bucks for, for the paste. And then you just mix that in the resin. What up, guys? Uh, fast forward probably a good week, week and a half. And I finally got the stuff for the coloring. Black newer, <laughs> whatever that is. I thought it was going to be like a paste, but it's actually just like a liquid. So, first things first, before I get into any of that, I need to go ahead, because this thing's ready, but I need to go ahead and get the carbon fiber ready. Okay, so what I'm doing is trying to avoid any distortions in the weave. So, whenever you cut it, carbon fiber fabric, it frays out just naturally like that. So, if you tape it, you get a nice, you can get a nice clean edge, even though that's pretty sloppy and I can do much better. I, I got new scissors. The other scissors were the problem. These are brand new. So this will cut, cut perfect. Now one thing to note, when you're laying the tape down, make sure you have it exactly where you want it and then lay it down. Don't like kind of put it down a little bit, try to work it along because it'll get stuck and kind of want to fold up. And also, if I were to try to peel this back off this right now, it's going to trash the weave. So once it's down, it's down. So make sure you have it right the first time. Okay. So I think that's going to work out perfect. Nice. See how clean it is? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I just need to go ahead and get this thing cleaned up with some alcohol real quick. Okay, so while that thing's drying up, I'm going to go ahead and start mixing up the resin. So, uh, I'm going to start kind of small, uh, cause I'm not sure how much of this stuff it's going to take, if it's going to be a tiny little bit or not. So might just do like three quarters of this cup, start mixing it up, see how it goes from there. So how this works is I want to mix the resin and the coloring up together, no hardener. Then I'll actually measure how much of uh, how much I have including the dye and that way my ratios won't get screwed up in the uh, uh, duration until it gets to the point of certain point of tackiness set up all that stuff as long as I do this by the books so I'll probably end up mixing the resin here with the black and then probably dumping it out of this into something else to get exactly how much I want so we'll, we'll see here we'll play it by ear Okay, so it definitely does not take much of the coloring, man. Just a tiny little bit. It's more than enough. Look how dark that is. Okay, so I went ahead and got it to uh, 15 cc's. So we're going to do half of that for hardener, which would be 7.5 cc's of hardener. Okay, everything is nice and mixed up. So, find a good spot for you guys. And now, I'm just going to go ahead just put a nice little even layer on everything. And there we go, bros. And after you go over, it's a good time to kind of go back over spots where you might see it just a little bit thick because this, this is the part that's actually kind of crucial here. You don't want it all globbed up. All right, man, it's been two hours and 15 minutes exactly. I feel like this should be the right time. So let's try it out. Just want to touch it. Let's try it with a clean piece because that I was, I was already testing earlier. Not seeing anything. Now, if you hold it on there for a second, you might get some. So. That's perfect. Perfect. That's what I'm talking about. 
Okay, it's time. We'll take us down to the floor so you guys can get a better view of this. Okay, so far so so good. Now I did actually, as you can see, it was shifted a little too far that way because I couldn't quite see it, so I missed this little piece. But what I'll do is I'll just take the Dremel and Dremel that right off so you won't even see it. Okay, so now what I need to do is get some scissors and just trim the edge all the way around. Same thing inside here. Same thing up in here over through here and uh, that way I can tuck it underneath and kind of tape it with tape before I actually put the next coat so let me go ahead and get the scissors and then uh, like I said I'll just trim just right up to the edge all the way around alright man there's what it looks like so you just really just want to take your time just go over it nice and slow take your time there's everything taped off in the back now it's obviously more of a pain when you're working with something small like this trying to get everything all around the quarters and stuff as opposed to uh, like if this was uh, like a hood or something be so much easier so much bigger but being tiny and intricate like this this is why it's kind of a it's kind of a pain it took a few but uh, now there's many ways you can do. You can let this set up like it is to let it grab a hold of this so it won't move or whatever. Uh, personally though, uh, I think I did it kind of like right on the, the line of waiting for the next coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a batch and I'm gonna get started, man. I see no reason to wait. Cause a lot of people tell you to wait, let it get a good firm grasp on that, but it's gonna do that at the end of the day anyway. Just as long as you take your time, cause see, if you did it a little bit early right now and you put it on there and you brush too hard, the fabric could slide. You see what I'm saying? And then distort the weave. So basically it's just another thing, like I just said before, uh, just want to be real careful. Just handle it nice and easy. Don't dig in with the brush. You're just kind of blotting it because now we're just basically getting the resin to soak up everything or the uh, the fabric to soak up the resin. That's the whole point of this 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 first coat we're about to do. All right, I'm just gonna take my time. Resin all mixed up. All right, man, first coat is on and done. That looks amazing. That's crazy. <laughs> yes. All right, so I want to show you guys another good thing I like to do is what I like to call a drip test. And that's where I'll just get some, and this is left over from what I just did. I'll get some, and I'll pick it up, and I'll just let it drip off the end of that thing. You notice how easily it drips. When it gets to the point where it's just tacky to the touch, you'll literally have trouble getting this up and it'll be really stringy and it will not drip from the end of this anymore. So that's another indication when you if you keep testing the drip thing, you not get any drip and it's just kind of stringing off there, then you can go in and, and use the, uh, the rubber glove test. So. Okay, so just for reference, it's been an hour and 45 minutes, so it's a half an hour sooner remember I used double the amount of resin hardener and that's perfect it's ready it's ready for the next coat so I'm just gonna mix up the same exact batch I did last time I'm not gonna bore you guys with the next three coats we'll just come back tomorrow when all three coats are done and we'll check it out man so I'll see you guys then peace what up guys a new day I was hoping to get this thing scuffed up today and clear coat it but I woke up and I seen that big divot right there. I'm not really sure what causes that. I kept getting all over the place last night. I don't get it. So it turned out good. You can see some brush strokes and stuff in it, but that's the biggest problem right there. I'm like, oh man, you're kidding me. So at this point, I actually have to sand it down to get another coat on. So, uh, 
and break out some 800 grit start wet sanding it that'll actually let me see there were high spots and low spots and all that so it might actually be a good thing to go ahead and do another coat so let me go ahead and start wet sanding this thing with 800 okay so I'm gonna do this by the books at this point and there's a lot of like ripples and stuff in it that I just can't get out with wet sand at this point so I'm gonna break out the 220 and get everything super smooth so that's what they said to do is go ahead and get everything at this point super smooth I can go ahead and get all my tape off I can go ahead and cut this piece off right here anything and everything that you want to prep that needs to be cut or anything like that you should do it now then I'll 220 then we'll do our last final layer and that and this stage is what's going to get it prepped and ready for this next one will be a real thin coat and that's just to lay it nice and smooth and even I won't be layering it up like I was before um, and that way I can just wet sand it with four to six hundred grit work my way up and it will be I want to sit in there in the bathroom for hours trying to get this thing perfect which is what I'm having to do right now it's just being a nightmare all right now it's very important at this point to actually use some sort of block because we're wanting to get this as absolutely level as humanly possible but don't get too aggressive because you don't want to go clear through all the work we just did well as you can see I've been doing some sanding <laughs> so I got everything trimmed the tape and everything as best I could all the way around the outside still a few places here and there I could probably probably still get that stuff off right over in there a little bit more but I see now why they're saying this was such like a crucial step here at the end it's called denibbing it's just where you have high spots and low spots where you first put the resin on and it sticks to the, the actual carbon fiber sometimes it wants to poke up and leave spots and then if you keep laying over that you're just building those spots up so at some point it is best to go ahead and hit it with 220 like right before your final coat is what I'm saying so I will from from now on I'll uh, do the base coat do the carbon fiber do the layer on top of that then do another layer on top of that and then I would actually sand this thing down like I'm doing now 220 then I would actually do the final coat because the final coat is going to lay like really smooth once I get all this smoothed out because I can still kind of feel little waves and stuff in it uh, but you can tell it's just going to come out a lot smoother and you're not going to feel like all the ripples and stuff that I had see how much smoother the edges are now because they weren't like that before so this is definitely going to make a huge difference so let me keep hitting it with this 220 nice and carefully until I can just get everything nice and smooth and get rid of all the shiny spots because the shiny spots are what's telling you what's still what's still low so you get rid of the shiny and you know that you got everything nice and smooth. Okay, I'm happy with it, man. This thing's amazingly smooth now. So, now I can go ahead and mix up, put the last batch of resin on, but I need to get this thing obviously cleaned up, some dish soap liquids, then alcohol and all that good stuff. Okay, so I also don't need to mix up nowhere near as much resin because, again, this... Is just going to be a thin little top coat that I can wet sand with uh, 800 grit to get it ready for uh, clear coat. What up, guys? Been about 24 hours now, and uh, I've been wet sanding it on this thing uh, for a little while now. Just trying to get like the ripples and stuff like that out of it, so it has a nice flat clean look whenever I uh, clear coat it now I'm gonna take time out from the wet sand and you can see like where the drips were from the resin see all those I'll have to cut all those off so I'm just gonna break out the Dremel and for the most part the big ones I'll cut them down with a cutoff wheel and then I got like this little sanding disc and I'll sand them down flat with that
Okay, so I actually forgot that I need to redrill this hole out too. <laughs> All right, man, I'm getting pumped. So, look at that hole too. It's drilled perfectly. <laughs> All right, so I just need to get this thing cleaned up. It's ready. Get cleaned up with some Oxy Ultra Deluxe, the usual. Uh, then bring it in here. Uh, I gotta run to Walmart real quick, get some of the Terry cloth so we can do the double cleaning with alcohol. And we'll be ready to clear coat this thing, man. What up guys, a new day, and check this out. Bam! <laughs> I'm ready to get this thing clear coated, man. This thing is ready. So, just need to go ahead and get this thing cleaned up with some alcohol, some microfiber towels, and then we'll prep the clear coat. Okay, it's been cleaned twice with alcohol. As you can see, it's still evaporating. So, wow, that's drying off. Go ahead and prep the clear coat. Now, for those of you new to the channel, it's a Spraymax 2K Clear. It's a two-part urethane, so how this works is, first off, you want to go ahead and shake it up really good for about two minutes. Okay, once you get it nice and shook up for about two minutes, you need to take this little red cap off here, put it on the bottom, push as hard as you can until you hear a loud pop, right like that. That does, that releases a hardener into here, and then you have a spray gun in your hand pretty much. So, now you wanna make sure you mix this up really good for about three minutes. All right, fellas, I don't wanna bore you with all the coats. This is like uh, coat number three, I think, and <laughs> yes, looking beautiful, man. So we'll cut back whenever, uh, whenever I'm finished with everything. What up guys, it's been about 24 hours now since I got done uh, clear coating this piece. You guys know what time it is. freaking amazing man now here's the thing um this makes me really want to do a carbon fiber dash but here's the major issue check us out okay so with the regular 350z dash it's all just hard plastic but with the 370z dash as you can see inside there's like this layer of like kind of foam stuff so the whole dash everything is squishy see what i'm saying like this isn't actually hard plastic so, that's the major issue I'm dealing with. I don't know how resin will work with this stuff. You know what I mean? If it's just going to soak it up or if it's going to want to like burn through this material. That's the only issue I'm dealing with. If anybody out there knows the answer to this one, please throw it in the comments, man. Because I would love to turn this into carbon fiber. That'd be insane. So again, man, if any of you guys know the type of material that that is, please drop it down in the comments so I can figure this out and see if I can actually make this happen. So with all that being said, man, if you guys like the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. If you guys new to the channel, want to see some more content, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit the bell notification so you'll be notified of my newest content. And, uh, peace!